Well, hey, welcome back. We're excited uh, to have you. I, I tell you, this has been an incredible weekend uh, already. Uh, what an awesome time of worship. We're starting a new series, 2020 Self-Care. 2020 Self-Care. Self-Care, it's about taking care of what takes care of you. Uh, you know, understand this. We're all stewards. Everything you have or I have is, is completely, is completely under the direction of God. It's all his. Uh, Everything uh, that we could ever hope to be is directed through him. And there's nothing that we encounter that gets past him and nothing that's going on currently in this this whole uh, uh, aspect of virus or, uh, uh, you know, the unknowns. Uh, Sometimes people are are talking about, well, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Listen, you know what? God knows what's going to happen, and he's in control, and we're excited about that. Uh, our self-care response, Here, here's our self-care response, uh, what we're doing, uh, why we're doing that this weekend, again, is, is a precaution. It's simply a due diligence. Uh, we, we have elderly, we have vulnerable, and we have the common good we have to think about. And so this week, we're, we're taking a, a break from gathering together at a building, but it's no less a powerful church, because wherever you're at, that's where church is at. And so I thank you for joining us. There is a global thought going on, global thought of self-care. Uh, this global understanding uh, of symptoms. Uh, people are, are looking at different symptoms that are, are going on. Let me give you a definition of a symptom. A symptom is an indicator. It's a sign. It is a result of something potentially bigger or more progressive than the symptom itself. Uh, symptoms are simply a type of qualifier, we might say. Uh, what happens is if someone's not feeling good, if someone is, is uh, under the weather, uh, sometimes what we do is we end up, uh, we, we say, well, we need to take their temperature because uh, temperature is a form of a symptom of maybe something else is going on. And people, relationships, computers, cars, marriages, they all really have symptoms that we can look at. Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. I want to read this to you. It says, my son, it says, pay attention to what I say. Uh, Turn your ear to my words. The writer says, do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. I think that's a a, a great opportunity to lean in, to listen, to to adhere to what the word says here. Uh, You ever go to a a doctor or a dentist? I know I've done this. Uh, You go to the doctor or the dentist, and, and, and maybe it's just a checkup. And then uh, a dentist particularly, and they go through and they look at your teeth and they, they, they realize you haven't done what they told you to do the last visit, and uh, uh, you, you listen to them, or you go to the doctor and, and the doctor says, yeah, you need to uh, uh, watch what you eat, you need to get more exercise, you need to uh, uh, do this or that, and you realize that you haven't adhered to that. You know these things, you know that doing that would make your life healthier, it would make it better, but you didn't. You didn't listen. You didn't quite uh, take the uh, significance of what they said to you. Um, you know, there was a middle-aged lady. I like this story. Uh, it was a middle-aged lady, and, and she has some heart problems, and she has a heart attack, and she goes to the hospital. And when she gets there, they're, they're working on her. Well, she has just really this out-of-body experience, and, and she has a dream, and, and the and she's like, am I, am I going to die? And the Lord tells her, he says, no, you've got another 43 years, nine months, and six days left of your life. And, and she wakes up, and, and she begins to recover, and she's just all encouraged and excited, and she's like, well, i got so much life ahead of me still. And, and so she decides that while she's in the hospital, she might have a few uh, touch-ups done. And uh, so she, uh, you know, she has a tummy tuck, and she, uh, she has a kind of a facelift, and, and she even has somebody to come in and uh, kind of color her hair. And, and, uh, and so the last day, they, they uh, let her out, and she recovers, and, and she leaves, and she's thinking, I've got so much life ahead, and she crosses the street, and an ambulance hits her, and she dies. I know, it's a story. <sighs> But here's the thing. She gets to heaven and she's a little bit upset and she goes, "The Lord." She goes, "Lord." She says, "You told me I had all this time over 43 years left." And he looked at her and he goes, "Well, I didn't recognize you." And so, you know, sometimes we make decisions. 
we get information. And, and, and they're good decisions and they're, <laughs> they're bad decisions. And sometimes they're symptoms of really what's going on and maybe what's not going on in our lives. And, and self-care can be that way. We, we take care of ourselves, but sometimes it's not the things maybe we should be doing or should be focusing on. Proverbs 4.23 it says, above all else, it says, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. That's a powerful, powerful verse, one of my favorite verses in all of Scripture. Uh, above all else, of all these other things, of all the stuff that you could be dealing with, that you could be worrying about, guard your heart. That's huge. That's huge. That's, that's for every single one of us. Guard your heart. Above all else, guard your heart. In, in the Hebrew culture, what they understood about the heart, uh, th this idea that the scripture brings out, is it was, a, it was a metaphor. The heart was the center. It was the core of a person's being. It encompassed their character. It encompassed their, their integrity, their ethics, their, their whole personality. That was the heart. You're to guard this because it affects every single part of your life, and they understood this. It was beyond blood. It was it was it was beyond the the function of an organ. It it was everything, and it was to be guarded. Proverbs four twenty three through twenty seven says, "Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free of perversity." Here's the thing: perversity is a symptom. We're talking about symptoms and self care. Here's perversity is a symptom. It says it, it says keep your mouth free of perversity of that symptom. It says keep corrupt talk from your lips. Corrupt talk is a symptom. When you hear somebody speak of things they shouldn't be saying or, or uh, responding in a certain way, there's a symptom going on in that arena. Let your eyes look straight ahead, verse 25. That if you're looking here and there, uh, it could cause anxiety. It could cause fear. If, if you're just focused on what the news is saying in our current situations, uh, that, can, that can rise up. You know what? We, we need to get back to the word of God. We'll talk about that. It says, fix your gaze directly before you. Again, uh, if, we're, if we're looking here and there and everywhere and not looking to God, uh, that's a symptom. That's a symptom. We'll talk about that. Give careful thought to the paths of your feet, this careful thought that you and I, we have to, as, as we walk down this road, as we, as we carry on in this life that God so graciously invites us to be with him on this journey, that we're to give careful thought to our, our, our path, to where we step, to, to how we live our lives all in context of the heart. He says, and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left. Again, when people turn and, and they begin to trust in here and there and they, they negate God out of that, that's a symptom. We'll talk about that. Keep your foot from evil. You know, if you think of uh, a word, and unfortunately is more common, is cancer and, and there's all different kinds of sickness and disease. But in this illustration, if you think about it, imagine going to the doctor you have a headache, and you have a, a sore throat, dizziness, fatigue. Uh, you know, we would we would say that's a <laughs> something that that uh, now we would say you have coronavirus, and chances are you don't. <laughs> and and uh, but you you have all these conditions, and you go to the doctor, and the doctor examines you, and and finds out that your body is full of cancer. As unfortunate as that would be, uh, the doctor comes back and, and they tell you, they say, well, uh, I have medicine to treat your headache. I have medicine to treat your sore throat, uh, to treat your dizziness. We can give you this or that. Um, uh, they have medicine for your fatigue. And then let's say you start feeling better and these meds actually do what they're designed to do and you're amazed how great your doctor is, but the, the thing that is deteriorating in your body is this idea of cancer, but sure, you feel better, uh, you know, uh, all the while, nothing's really helping you, and your, your body's a time bomb. That wouldn't be good. Uh, what this is, is it's called symptomatic treatment. The definition of symptomatic treatment is a medical therapy of disease that only affects its symptoms, not its cause. I can tell you this, when God does a work in your heart, when God does a work it's beyond just treating a symptom or 
or treating something you're going through right now. He wants to treat your whole being. He wants to come in and affect your whole spirit, your whole, your whole aspect of life, this idea of the heart. He doesn't want to just treat a symptom. And so that's what we're looking at. It may work for uh, a headache, but it doesn't work for cancer. It, uh, it may work for cold, but it doesn't work for sin. See, we all have this condition called sin in our lives, and God wants to work in that area at the heart level. Sin, the definition of sin, is anything that causes a separation with God. You know, some of us, we, we walk through different things, and, and, and to allow our eyes to go to the left or the right, to allow our eyes to go on this, this, uh, this idea that we, we have to, uh, uh, you know, trust over here and trust over here, when in reality, we have the one who never leaves us or forsakes us. God, through Jesus Christ, has given us an opportunity to walk with him, close with him. It says he'll never leave us, never forsake us. He takes care of sin, that whole thing, not just the symptom. That's what I want you to get. He takes care of the sin. So sin's like a symptom. I want to present three symptoms of what I believe are most commonly overlooked, most commonly untreated, uh, disregarded at times. Uh, And I want to take us... uh, to the bigger issue, the issue of the heart. The first symptom I want to talk to you about is symptom of temptation. Temptation. Uh, do you realize uh, that to be tempted is not a sin? Some people think, well, I'm being tempted, so that's a sin. That being tempted is not a sin. Uh, temptation in and, in and of itself is not a sin. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 tells us this. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. I know sometimes we, we go through things and we think we're all alone. We think it's, it's something that's just isolated to our lives that nobody else could ever understand or appreciate. But know this, that there is no temptation that has come upon you or upon me that's not common to man. But I can tell you this, God provides a way out. He provides a way out. And and he offers his hand. He offers his protection. He offers himself. James 1, 13 through 15 says, When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. It says, For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they're dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Again, it's describing this, looking to the right or to the left. It says, verse 15, then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, the separation from God. And sin, when it's full grown, gives birth to death. Praise God, he gives us a way out. And there is a potential progression to temptation. There's a potential progression uh, to temptation that can ultimately lead us to sin. We understand that. And so just treating the symptomatic approach or or treating the symptoms of what tempts us, treating those symptoms and not the whole being is just like putting a Band-Aid on something that's going to bleed out. It's putting a Band-Aid on something that it's just going to temporarily help, but truly there's a much bigger fix needed. The first is symptom of temptation. The second is the symptom of the Word of God. Now, when I say that, uh, the word of God is a good thing. The word is a type of symptom in people's lives. And remember, regarding symptoms, they're indicators, they're signs. Uh, sometimes uh, people will come to me and they'll, uh, you know, ask for counsel, ask for prayer, going through a difficult time, just need an ear, need, need a thought, just need a, a, a perspective. And as I hear their story, I'll ask, uh, hey, um, so are you reading the word of God? Are you getting into the Bible are you, are you allowing God's word to be the roadmap, to be the, 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 the direction that you need? And, and oftentimes uh, people will say, no, I, I've got to get into the word. See, the temptation, uh, that temptation, uh, other things going on, I'm too busy, I need to make time. See, that's a temptation. See, the word of God is our compass. The word of God is where we find our life, where we find direction. He speaks through it. 
It's kind of like checking a temperature when somebody's sick. I go to the Word of God, and it, and it checks us. It, it, it develops us. Uh, Hebrews 4.12 says, For the Word of God is living and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes, here it is, of the heart, of my whole being. That's what the Word of God does. So when I open it, it's not just words on a page. It's truly living and active, as this scripture tells us. It's something that, that truly can bring conviction, but it can also bring encouragement. That's a powerful thing, and that's what we need. So the temptation of the Word of God, if, if, if you look at your life and you've been tempted to look elsewhere, you've been tempted to negate that, come back, to what can truly affect, what can truly guide and lead your life. The symptom of prayer, the first was the, the, the aspect of the symptom of temptation. The, the second is the symptom of the word of God. And the third is the symptom of prayer. James 5, 13 through 20 says, is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Well, that's, a, that's an obvious thing, right? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. You know, if I, if I look at my life and the, and the symptom of, uh, of prayer, uh, that, that indicator of prayer is not there, it, then something's wrong. It's as though the thermometer says you're running a fever and you're running dangerously high. See, I've got to have prayer just like you've got to have prayer. You can't just have others pray for you. That's powerful. But if you need, if you need God to speak to your life, then you need to talk to him. You need to pray. That's a relationship element that God offers to us in prayer. I close with this. The symptom of temptation. Remember, a symptom, indicator or sign, is a result of something potentially bigger or more progressive than the symptom itself. A symptom is just this indicator. It's just a sign on this. Temptations reside in what entices us. You know, what gets our attention, uh, what fashions our desires in areas of the heart. Again, above all else, we have to guard our heart. This is part of self-care, which goes into not just a physical, but a spiritual aspect of our life. The symptom of the Word of God, I find that when I read the Word of God, it reads me. When I get into the Word of God, it gets into me. That's what the word of God is. Remember, it's active. It's, it's sharp. It's like a double-edged sword that cuts and it divides. And it brings life to us. Therefore, get into the word of God and this symptom of prayer, this indicator of prayer that if I find like there's this distance between me and God, there's this gap, there's this void missing, I can tell you God hasn't moved. God hasn't gone, I'm just gonna close up my ears and not listen. No, listen, he's there. He's there right now. Wherever you're at, he's right there. All you have to do is talk to him. All you have to do is go to him. All you have to do is give him what you're dealing with. This is our communication, our connection to the Lord. You know, if communication stops in any relationship, it's a symptom of something bigger. It's a symptom of something bigger. I've, I've talked to people, they've gone through things and and, and tragedies can do this. Loss can do this. That we get angry with God. He didn't do or he didn't come through the way we wanted him to. And, and so we stop talking to him. Listen, that situation, that hurt, that loss didn't catch God by surprise. And some people are angry by that. Why would he do? Why would he allow? Listen, God is perfect. He is sovereign. But know this, he loves you so very much and he opens his ears, he opens himself to you, that you can talk to him, that you can pray to him, that you can communicate with him. Maybe there's bigger things going on in your life. Maybe there's things that have taken your attention, that have, have caused you to look to the right or the left, have caused you to let your, your journey kind of pivot away from the things of God. Uh, let me tell you, those are symptoms 
these things. I, I, I did it because of this. I, I'm going through this time. I just gotta, I, I just gotta think, I just, listen. Don't let the enemy tempt you to walk away from the Lord. Invite the Lord into your journey. Open his word up. That's the best self-care we could have for 2020. That's the best self-care we could have in whatever situation comes our way. Whether it be a virus, whether it be what, whatever. Let the Lord into your life more than just to treat a symptom, but to truly treat your heart, your whole being. Above all else, guard your heart. What have you allowed into your heart? That's a big question. Again, as I'm, as I'm wrapping up this message, what have you allowed into your heart that might have distanced you from the Lord? See, that's, that's the area where God wants to begin, where, where God wants to heal, where God wants to bring you back to him. Maybe you have fear. Maybe, maybe you're a little overwhelmed right now. You want answers, you don't have answers. You, you, you want solutions, you don't have solutions. You want provision and, and you're not sure where it's gonna come from. Just know this, uh, God knows and he can be trusted. Lean into him, he's got a, a word for you. What, but what lies behind your symptom and or your sin? Your symptom and or your sin, what, what has separated you? Uh, what's your bigger issue? That's where I want you to focus and and are you using a symptomatic approach? God, if you'll just take care of this, then I'll be okay. I'll be good to go. When in reality, God could perfectly take care of that, but he wants to take care of so much more than that. But you have to trust him. You have to trust him. I thank the Lord for an opportunity for us together. I'm gonna pray here in a moment. I thank the Lord that we have an opportunity this weekend that uh, has been deemed a national day of prayer. And I want us to, to focus in a certain, uh, some sp specific areas here in a moment. Um, pray that we're driven by faith and not fear. Pray that we're driven by faith and not fear. Pray that uh, for people who maybe have been impacted by this virus. We know that lives and families have been impacted. We know that there are people quarantined. We know that uh, there is uh, a lot of unknowns. We, we know this, but we don't need to fear. We don't need to fear. So we pray for people who've been impacted by the virus around the world. Uh, pray for our missionary families, uh, for our missionary families overseas, uh, our global partners that we have. Uh, going through a lot of different decisions and and. As you know, things change by the hour, by the half hour sometimes, and we need to pray for them. And, and we want to pray for the church to seize this opportunity. Listen, the church isn't backing down. God's not backing down from this, and neither will his church, neither will crosswalk. We're not backing down. We're simply pressing in. We're simply taking precautions. We're, we're uh, doing our due diligence, but we're praying, church. We're praying. We're praying for a mighty outpouring of God's spirit, of his hope, of his gospel message. That's what we want to pray. We want to pray Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's our prayer. That's our prayer. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the opportunity to gather as your church. Lord, in so many different formats, thank you for the use of technology. God, thank you for the opportunity of your word to go out across the waves, uh, for, your, for your word to go out across the, the web. Lord, thank you that your word is being declared in your church and that your people are gathering. And God, we are not without hope. Lord, we have hope and we have a future. And Jesus, we pray for your power and your presence in all these situations. Lord, we pray your covering. We pray your health and vitality on your people. And Lord, we pray for your favor on your church. God, bless officials as they make decisions. And God, bless your church. Lord, your church is ordained to the point that the gates of hell cannot withstand it. Lord Jesus, we thank you for that. We love you, Lord. Maybe uh, you have a prayer request. Uh, you can put that online. Uh, you can go to our website crosswalkcc.com. Uh, 
you know, I, I would encourage you, you know, we, we worship in so many different ways. One of the ways that we worship the Lord is in our giving and is acknowledging that everything we have is yours, God. Everything that, that belongs to us is yours. And Lord, uh, uh, we're just managers of it. We're stewards of it. And therefore, the tithe and the offerings belong to him. You know, if you want to give, if you would uh, continue in your support and your faithfulness uh, to the storehouse, uh, you can go online. You can see uh, some of the information there. If you're, on, if you're watching on our website, you can go to the Give button. If you have the app, you can, you can give through the app. Um, there's there's different ways that you can do this. I encourage you be faithful, church. Uh, as this unwinds, as it as we continue forward, uh, we will we will look and, and reevaluate what our, uh, our our campus looks like in the in the weeks to come. But I'm so thankful for this opportunity that we can gather together. I'm going to close us uh, with prayer and uh, get you on with your day. Lord Jesus, thank you, thank you, God, that you. You know exactly what's going on and you know exactly what we need. And Lord, I pray for families. I pray for children. And God, I pray for, again, your protection. And Lord, as we look into our lives, this aspect of self-care, Lord, that we look beyond just the symptoms in our life. We look beyond just the symptoms of temptation and, 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 and let you... Uh, Evaluate those areas and draw us in, convict us, Lord God. Uh, the area of, of your word, that Lord, uh, that symptom, if we're trusting in other things, we're, we're looking for answers in other places that God, we will redirect, we will allow you to turn our hearts back to your word. And that Lord, that symptom of prayer, Lord, that, that may be lacking in our life, God, uh, just that symptom, uh, that, those indicators, those signs, Lord God, help us to be aware and allow your Holy Spirit to work. I love you, Jesus. Bless this time. Bless your people. Bless your church. I pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Have an awesome weekend.